Hi there, and welcome to another Views from the Valley, your weekly roundup of the news here in the United States, coming to you from v3.co.uk's offices in San Francisco. With me as ever, Sean Nichols. Hi, Sean. Hi, Ian. Right, OK, well, we've obviously we're now deeply into conference season. As you, If you've been reading the site, you'll see that Madeline is over in uh, Las Vegas at the moment. With CA, we're uh, covering CA. We've had a bunch of stuff from EMC as well last week with you. And then we've got the Google I.O. conference tomorrow. Developers conference looks to be very interesting. I should be down there at the unseemly hour of 8 a.m., but still. Anyway, on to this, on to the news that we've had this week. You had a rather interesting one with Google that kicked off. I mean, we've long l- lusted after the Nexus one as a handset, although neither of us have got one as yet. But um, it seems yeah, to be changing. Yeah, if you're in the U.S. and you want to buy a Nexus one, from now on you're going to have to go to a storefront, go to a retail outlet to get it. Uh, Google has announced that they're basically going to cut all of their web sales and sell it directly through retailers now. It's an interesting strategy. I mean, why do you think they've done this? Is it because they're getting they're just not getting enough web sales, or because they're looking for retail partners? I think it's probably both. I mean, um, pretty much right after the Nexus one came out, there were already reports that it wasn't selling well. Um, it's still not selling well compared to um, other Android handsets, like things like the Droid, um, a lot of the other HTC yeah, models. Yeah, surprised me because the Droid is very much old technology, and yet it's you know it's still being sold over the counter. You can't upgrade it to the latest of Android. Well, they pumped a ton of money into marketing it as well. Which <laughs> we put all this money into it. We've got to get something in return, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, certainly the Nexus One looks like a decent handset, and going the retail channel could be a good a good thing for Google to do. But um, it seems odd to be shutting down one of your you know, key sales outlets. Um, yeah, well, obviously it wasn't that key for them. Um, mm. Like I mentioned, in um, a lot of the European market, they've been, they haven't been doing web sales. They've been doing retail-only sales. And it seemed to work better for them. So. Yeah, well, I guess it makes sense. If you get the retailers on side, then their marketing spend goes into it as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, sticking with Google, I covered a story on... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, earlier on this week about, um, in fact on Friday, about Google uh, having problems in Germany. Now I know San Francisco, Germany, but we've been following Google, you know, we follow Google quite closely here and it was quite interesting to see the difference in attitudes that came through. Basically the German government found out through an investigation that Google had been collecting packet data uh, on Wi-Fi networks using its Street View cars. Now Google said this was a mistake, this was an application which accidentally got into the Wi-Fi scanning software and And, you know, they're very sorry and they'll be deleting the data. And the Germans are actually getting quite nasty about it. But over here, it didn't seem to cause that much of a fuss. I mean, people just like, well, it's out there. Why can't they scan it? Yeah, it's it's interesting to see some of the headlines. People are really having a field day. Germans demand surrender. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, Falk had World War III, Google versus Germany. (laughs) I mean, but yeah, I just found it very interesting, the the difference in attitude between the U.S. and Europe. Because Europe, uh, Europe... went potty over this, whereas the Americans were just like... Well, it, it is. It's interesting, especially online. There's, there seems to... Europeans seem to be a whole lot more protective of freedom and uh, you know, personal data. The irony. Yeah, we're <laughs> at the U.S. where we've, you know, for so Land long prided fruit. ourselves on, yeah, freedom and individual liberties and, you know, the, right, the rights of the individual and all that. Um, they're actually, we're actually being fairly lenient. Not, not, people aren't too... I think, as a whole, aren't really so concerned about what they're you know, what kind of data they're turning over, what kind of information they're disclosing. And, um, you know, it, it is interesting to see, see the difference in the way it's being handled as well. Yeah, and it's, as Bill Hicks used to say, America, the land of the free, where you're free to do what you're told. But, um, yeah, it's interesting, I mean, the, the, the dichotomy between the two. But we'll keep an eye on this one, because it looks like Google could be facing some really quite increased pressure in Washington as a result of this case. Um, right, okay, moving on. Uh, in terms of analyst reports, you had a good one from Forrester. Tell us about that. Uh, yeah, interesting report, Forrester. So that basically, um, identity and access management tools, basically identity tools, logins, mm-hmm. that sort of thing, um, are, are amongst European businesses are supposedly a very big concern. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people are really interested in improving their security, things to integral part of security, but not that many people are actually adopting these, t- these tools and putting them in place. Well, it's the age old problem with technology, isn't it? Everyone thinks it's a great idea, but nobody's actually got around to putting it in yet. I mean, you've still got a quarter of all browsers running uh, IE6, I think. Well, yeah, I think there, there's a difference between you know, what the company has identified as a huge mm-hmm. issue as a problem and what the IT staff is you know, willing to <laughs> put in and have to deal with. I mean, the report itself you know, pretty much concedes that 
identity, you know, identity access management tools can be kind of a pain to, to mm. put in, to say, to say the least. Uh, old <laughs> That's tough. very polite, yes. <laughs> yeah, and it can be kind of difficult to manage. So they actually suggested that a lot of companies might be going towards hosted services, um, outside services, which is fairly interesting considering everything we've heard about cloud computing and the opinions towards you know, trusting a lot of these essential services mm. to cloud providers. I mean, we saw this at RSA, something yeah. that came up again uh, last week with EMC. Mm-hmm. People st- companies, as yeah, well. companies yeah, companies still aren't that big on the idea of turning over, you know, these kind of vital tasks and activities to a hosted, you know, cloud service somewhere. You can understand it up to a point. I mean, it's um, it's quite a big leap of faith to make. Um, but I mean, we do. We always have had that age-old problem. I, mean, I can remember writing stories ten years ago about sort of ninety-nine percent of companies said antivirus is a must for their business. How many of them installed it? About a third, two thirds, maybe. You know, it's just yeah. Okay, I hit industry time to step up to the plate and get these things sorted. And finally, in the fun item of the news, um, Pirate Bay, the popular torrent uh, search engine, was taken down on Monday after a consortium of Hollywood studios expressed their displeasure to a German court and went after and served injunction to their ISP. Now, I haven't checked it this morning. I gather it's back up and running, though. Um, We're really seeing a constant cat and mouse Sort of struggle with these people, and I don't see what Hollywood's getting out of it that much. No, it's the same thing with the RIAA going after you mm-hmm. know all these peer-to-peer services and everything. They're not really saving saving themselves a ton of money. They're not really curbing these activities at all. Um, they're generating an enormous amount of bad will. Yeah, and I mean it's it's amazing that they still pursue you know this you know litigious approach when I think iTunes really showed this. Mm-hmm. People will buy music online. Will spend a lot of money to get music online. Um, if it's something that can be conveniently and easily done. And yes. no, nobody's doing it. I mean, this is kind of the problem with, you know, when you got sites like the Pirate Bay, they fill a need. It's not just mm. people want to get something they want to pay for. People actually want to see this stuff on their computers, watch it, yeah. you know, through these mediums, and nobody else is really providing that service right now. So that's yeah. why they're going to, you know, these illegitimate things. Make it quick, make it cheap, make it legitimate, and the vast majority of people, I mean, yeah, there's always going to be some freeloaders who, don't, who want to steal stuff, yeah. but I mean, the vast majority of people will do it. Uh, I was reading an article in, I think it was the FT, a week or so ago, where a guy wanted to take um, his DVD of Shaun and the, uh, Shaun of the Dead mm-hmm. um, and wanted to watch the film on the plane. Couldn't be bothered to rip it, so he just downloaded it legally and it came to, through to his computer within an hour and he was quite happy with that, even though he owns the DVD. It's, um, it's really quite bizarre. Um, but we shall see. Pirate Bay, up and down, uh, like the Assyrian Empire, to quote Monty Python. Um, but uh, it looks as though the pirates are going to win this one. Anyway.